Hey everybody. Today we're combining functions using sums, differences, products, and quotients. Given any two functions, f of x and g of x, we can build several new functions. First, let's build one called f plus g. And the rule that's defining f plus g is going to be this. For any input, x, plug that x into f, plug it into g, and then add up the results you get there. Similarly, we define f minus g to be the difference of the two functions that we had before, f times g to be the product of the functions, and f over g to be the quotient of the functions. In each case, the domain is going to be restricted by the domains of the two ingredient functions. In order for x to be in the domain of any one of these new functions, it has to be in the domain of both f and g. In this last case, f over g, we also need to remove any values of x that would make the denominator equal to zero. Let's work through a couple of examples to see how this works. Here are two functions, f of x equals the square root of x plus 2, and g of x equals x squared minus 16. Let's compute f plus g of x and f divided by g of x, and then determine the domains. So f plus g is defined by f of x plus g of x. I'm literally going to add the formulas for f and g to get the square root of x plus 2 plus x squared minus 16. Similarly, to do f divided by g of x, I'm going to just divide the formulas for f of x and g of x. So writing down these formulas is fairly straightforward. The domains are slightly trickier. In order to get the domains of these two functions, we're going to need the domains of f of x and g of x, the ingredient functions. So let's start with the radical, f of x equals the square root of x plus 2. We can't plug negative values into here, so the restriction on the domain is going to be x plus 2 greater than or equal to 0, setting the inside of the radical to be um, non-negative. Solving that, we get x greater than or equal to negative 2. That's the domain of f. The domain of g is going to be all real numbers. g of x is just a polynomial. There are no values we can't plug in. Overall, the domain of f plus g of x is going to be the intersection of those two, and that's just x greater than or equal to 2. That's the set of all values that can be plugged into both f and g. In interval notation, that's a closed bracket, negative 2, comma, infinity, open parenthesis. So that's also going to be a restriction on f over g of x. We're going to start with the set x greater than or equal to negative 2, and then remove from it any points that will make that denominator equal to 0. So our first task here is going to be to find when is g of x equal to 0. We need to solve x squared minus 16 equals 0. I solve that, for example, by factoring, and I get x equals plus and minus 4. These two values cannot be in the domain of f over g. Now, remember, I started with the set negative 2 comma infinity. I need to remove these points from that set. Negative 4 wasn't in that set to begin with, but 4 was. So I'm removing just x equals 4. Overall, I've got the interval negative 2 comma 4, negative 2 included, 4 omitted, union, the open interval, 4 comma infinity. One more example. Here are two more functions, f and g, and let's find f times g of x and then determine the domain. We're going to compute exactly like before. We're going to take the formulas for the two functions and multiply them, like so. Here I have an x in the numerator and an x in the denominator as factors, so those can cancel. I've got 2x plus 1, over x plus 5 times x plus 1. The domain of f is going to be all real numbers except 0 and negative 5. Those are the two numbers that will make the denominator of the formula for f of x equal to 0. Similarly, the domain of g of x is all real numbers except x equals negative 1. Negative 1 makes that denominator 0. So, in order for a value x to be in the domain of f times g, it has to be in both of those domains. So the domain of f times g is going to be all real numbers except for 0, negative 1, and negative 5. Here I have it written in interval notation. Now, you have to be very careful. 
x equals 0 is not in the domain of f times g of x, since it can't be plugged into f of x. However, if you look at the simpl simplified formula for f times g there in the middle of the slide, it does look like x can be plugged in. You have to make sure when you're computing domains of sums, differences, products, and quotients that you're looking at the unsimplified version so that you don't get the wrong domain.